And uh, well, with that, I will give our, uh, present our speaker for the month, a cartoonist, illustrator, writer, children's book author, uh, Chuck Whalen. Give it, welcome Chuck. Uh, hi everybody, thanks for inviting me here. Um, I'm not very used to uh, public speaking like this. It's kind of the first thing like this I've done, although oh, I've done a little bit of speaking over the years, but uh, I've sort of been uh, kind of at a place in my life where I'm, I'm wanting to do that a little bit more. So, uh, you know, this is a, a nice opportunity. So I'm excited to be here and thank you for inviting me. Um, I guess it was Donna who asked me by my friend Dale Sippoli. Um, he sort of proposed me to her and uh, I used to uh, do my webcomic Pufel with her uh, on uh, Modern Tales where um, they were running her strips, stints comics uh, back then. So, you know, that's that's how I've ended up here uh, to speak to you all. It's very nice to meet you. Um, so I guess I'm just sort of going to go through some of my work and give you a sort of retrospective of some of the things that I've done. Um, I, yeah, I started out, uh, just before I begin, I'll just tell you a bit about my background. I'm from the UK originally, as you can probably tell. Um, you know, I, I, I moved here when I was about 25. Um, and before that, um, I was, uh, you know, I, I was at high school. I, I always drew, I always did cartooning. It was sort of in my family. And my father would draw cartoons. Uh, he's actually a criminal prosecutor. Um, so, you know, but he, in his spare time, which, and I think I found over the years, I met quite a few lawyers who like to draw cartoons and he had them, he, he had them published in the newspapers. And then, uh, well, he's still alive. He's in his nineties now, uh, but I, I now he just does Christmas cards, but uh, you know, he was he was having cartoons published by the Oldie magazine, which was sort of came out of the, the remnants of Punch, you know, whatever was left of Punch sort of became the Oldie magazine under the editor Richard Ingram's there. And, you know, so uh, he, he would do more sort of straightforward gag cartoons, which are not quite so much what I've done. I don't know. I've been more, I'm slightly more illustration or comics. You know, I grew up um, early. My early influences were sort of... Uh, you know, I'd read Mickey Mouse comics, which he would buy me, which had a lot of that sort of Karl Bark stuff, which I, I really liked a lot back then. And, um, you know, Asterix and Tintin were other things that we that I grew up with over there. And, uh, you know, later on, uh, Judge Dredd and stuff like that. And um, um, uh, and when I was at high school, I was sort of roped into drawing cartoons for the school's Christian forum. So uh, I'm not I'm not a particularly religious person, but, uh, you know, I quite enjoyed that assignment every week. Um, and um, and after, after after I graduated from college and I, I didn't study art at college, I actually like got a business degree. But I always sort of kind of knew that I wanted to be a cartoonist. And, you know, but I thought, well, I, you know, I, I, and I also kind of knew that I wanted to be sort of fairly independent and working for myself rather than working for uh, a big company or anything like that. So, you know, I thought that would be useful. But I, I always drew. And again, all through college, I was sort of drawing stuff and. You know, and it, that, that degree sort of served me a lot in life. Like at one point I was sort of working in an ad agency as an art director and, you know, so it was all, it was all quite helpful. But um, the first job I got out of college was uh, working on like uh, a little company doing language teaching books. Um, and um, actually the, the owner, the founder of that, this woman, uh, Anne Mary Robertson, she just passed away recently, but uh, she really, you know, gave me my start and I, I you know I, I first I did little editorial things but quickly she had me you know she knew I found out I could draw and so she had me sort of um you know making little uh, edits to illustrations that would be sent in and before long I was sort of doing like whole you know comic strips and like little easy reader books and things like that and you know that's all my sort of earliest work and it was actually through that job that I got a, an assignment to sort of come over to California uh you know working on these books and doing the sort of uh, recording of the audio of that that sort of stuff and so that's sort of what brought me over here so again I wasn't I was sort of uh, sort of dabbling with being a professional cartoonist always sort of drawing things uh and uh, and when I got over here um uh, I, I I was in San Francisco uh and I uh, found out that there, there was a thing called the Hate Ashbury Free Press was still going uh you know and another of my big influences was uh the Freak Brothers comics you know Gilbert Shelton all that I like I like Robert Crumb a lot too there was a sort of documentary about him that I saw not that not the fame the movie but there was one that he made himself like a shorter one that you can still find on YouTube that was shown on uh on like some like I think the Panorama program in the BBC and it was just about sort of him living out it was it was 
you know, shortly before it was a couple of years before the big that big documentary came out. But it's really good. It's a little more about himself. And, you know, at that time, I found that very inspiring. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's the kind of life I want to lead. When, when the, the bigger documentary came out later, I was a bit like, oh, you know, <laughs> the thing he was a little things were a little weirder in that. I don't know if you've seen those. But um, anyway, so I guess I'll show you my first uh, slide here. Um, if I can share my screen. Uh, the share screen right on the bottom middle okay, there. There you go. All right, so the, can you see that? Yeah. All right, so that's a, an image I created for the Hey Ashbury Free Press. So I did a few sort of illustrations for them, but this is, I got to do a cover for them. Actually, it wasn't originally printed in full color like this because there was more sort of primitive printing techniques. So um, it was done with, uh, you know, in black and white and then it had a sort of rainbow screen behind it. And uh, later on, I colored it. But uh, yeah, this sort of has a lot of uh, the themes that uh, I was, interested in you know like so the theme for the issue like every issue had a theme so the theme for this was the apocalypse and um yeah so i've sort of chosen this because it was like the first sort of significant work i really done the first cover that i had done uh and it's got a lot of different things and you know i was sort of quite interested in like the occult like hey asbury you know that you know the three brothers you can see fat freddy's cat i just snuck in there we've got the four horsemen of the apocalypse there's uh San Francisco being uh, destroyed, or the Earth being destroyed in the background. There, there's flying saucers, there's Jerry Garcia flying around. Uh, there's Stonehenge at the top, which is actually quite near where I used to live in England, uh, and a little rabbit. And I also used to live quite near Watership Down too. So yeah, there's uh, just a lot of little things going on in there, uh, you know, to look at. And um, you know, now more recently, I've been working on sort of search and find books, and I got into doing that sort of thing, like Where's Waldo. So this one's sort of kind of quite. Um, quite emblematic of that and um i don't know i don't know if you if you guys want to ask any questions about these images as i'm going along uh you know feel free um you know i, I haven't really got a sort of major plan here i just sort of put these slides together so um yeah so you, there's lots of things that you, you can look and find in this image um you know and uh yeah you know the, the sort of thing that i like to do a sort of image where it's got a lot of different things going on and you know i really sort of think about it and uh you know weighing the composition all together uh so that was fun and uh yeah so i did the hey ashbury free press for a few years while i was sort of you know doing whatever i could to make a living um uh, and I got, I got a job in a print shop actually and uh, that was quite handy because uh, i'll move on now to um ooh, hello. okay wait a minute that's one off what's happening here let's see Hang on. oh i see all right let's go full screen again All right. All right. Now I'm not able to scroll for some reason. Okay, how do I get to the next one? Hang on. I think just doing the left left cursor should do it this time. Yeah, one. well it, it wasn't for some reason. Uh, it's still not. Hang on. Uh, anyway. Is not happy. I'm mean, quitting it and coming back in again. <laughs> All right, uh, let's try that again. All right, so there we go, it's happy again now. All right, uh, yes, yeah, so this is uh, from uh, my webcomic. Uh, so this is actually like slightly later image from my webcomic, but uh, so I started doing this as a black and white zine. I think I'd had the first issue out when I was lived back in England. Um, and then, you know, and, and I carried on making the zines when I was here for a few years. And then I really uh, started, as soon as I could put it on the web, I did. I guess, you know, I, I moved here in 1995 so you know the internet was just sort of coming about so you know and I was quite keen to sort of start putting comics on the web as soon as I could and I did and I and, you know so I've been doing it for a few years until round about the year 2000 I guess when I or somewhere around there where Modern Tales started up which is um you know there was the first professional web comics portal I don't know if you guys have heard about that through through Donna if she's mentioned that over the years but um yes so that was a guy Joey Manley um and you know he sort of gathered up a bunch of sort of us web cartoonists and you know started this portal 
Um, so yeah, so now I have them in a series of books that I have available like, on Amazon and elsewhere. And this is the cover. So it's, I call it a semi-autobiographical epic fantasy sitcom. Uh, Pewful's kind of a pretty useless wizard who's married to Tina the Warrior Princess. Uh, somewhat, somewhat based on my own life. Uh, you know, and a lot of people I know and friends and stuff get get rolled into it. And, uh, you know, I sort of do it as a generally as a gag strip, um, but with sort of ongoing stories. Um, so, yeah, here's Pewful, the main character. Again, this is like kind of a more recent drawing. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not showing a lot of my earlier things because, you know, I did Pewful for a long time as sort of exercise in, you know, that's just what I want to do. I didn't really know anything about writing or drawing comics or doing it. So I just sort of, you know, it was my sort of tool for making me draw something every day and, you know, keep moving forward with it. Um, here's Tina the Warrior Princess. Uh, yeah, later on they had kids as soon as when we had a kid. Uh, well, I had, had them have twins. So it's never exactly my own life. It's sort of always slightly sort of skewed from that, uh, you know. So um, here's a sort of fairly typical panel uh, from it. Well, this, this is sort of an opening panel from an early, one of the early issues, uh, but actually, it, but actually drawn later. So I, I've sort of, I've chopped it about over the years. So I sort of, the stuff I put into the zines early on, I, that's, that material is more or less retired. And then, you know, the stuff I have on the web is mostly all things from when I started, after I started putting it online, you know, uh, some, some, sometime in the mid to late 90s, really. Um, so here, this is, this is another sort of earlier strip. Um, so yes, so fancy, you know, wizards, dragons, I like D&D, &D, Dungeons and Dragons, all that sort of thing. That's always been a, a big part of my life. Uh, so, you know, I was just uh, doing what I thought was fun. Um, this is uh, a cover from uh, another issue, six, uh, second book. So I, yes, now I have it collected into about five different graphic novels. Uh, and, you know, Pewful, Pewful's main, and, you know, he just wants a quiet life. Uh, just, uh, yeah, so it's a sort of, you know, every, everyday story, but he sort of gets embroiled in epic adventures. And usually the sort of foes that he bat battles are sort of demons and gods, very sort of powerful beings. He's, a, he's an extremely unpowerful being himself. Uh, he, they have a, a little gnome, a little blue gnome, <laughs> who's based on our next door neighbor. She lives downstairs with them and uh, generally makes Pewful's life miserable. Um, you know, in this storyline, she's uh, joined the theater uh, and they've moved. Uh, well, the, uh, half the city's been invaded by chaos, but, you know, they're, they're, in the meantime, they're still trying to uh, continue their lives as normal. Uh, yeah, that's in this book, The Drain of Chaos. So, again, you can sort of see these images, you know, when I get ever get, get the opportunity, I do these quite busy scenes with like lots of different things going on in them. Uh, and that's become more what I, I sort of do now. Here, here's Tina discovering that she's pregnant for the first time while Pupil and Noma are arguing over the remote for the crystal ball. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of anachronisms, you know, which I explain away by it being like set in the far, far future. Uh, so, you know, if I, if I want to draw something from the modern world, then I just do. Um, let's see. Uh, yes, so some more. Yes, the Chaos Lords took over. So here I was getting a little bit political. I did this around the, around, around the time when... Uh, when the US went into Iraq and George Bush was making speeches about, uh, well, uh, yes. So I had, yes, so here, here the chaos lords who've taken over the city uh, are um, making their propaganda speech about how the current dictator in the city is being removed, uh, which is who's actually at this point Pupil's boss. So Pupil ends up being a bit like, I don't know if you remember in the war in Iraq, you know, the, they had the, the uh, Saddam Hussein's um, propaganda guy would come out and give the speeches. So Pupil ended up sort of being in that role uh, in return. But then, then he ends up sort of working for these guys as well. So I, I don't know, it's sort of, I get a little bit political, but not super political in all my work. Um, yeah, so here's the army arriving. So yeah, so there's quite a lot, you know, and I did it, I did it as a daily strip, you know, and I would do it after work and, you know, I ground away at it. And I think originally I sort of would do them as black and white. I colored them later, you know, I spent some time coloring them and, you know, collecting them together. And, and then I redrew a few panels like this sort of bigger one with the army later on just to, you know, fill it out. So yes, yeah, so Pufal like, ends up working for the Chaos Lords and, uh, you know, Noma's plays become very popular. Uh, then they go off sort of questing through the dungeons and things like that. Uh, and uh, yes, this later they move out to the countryside. I don't know, I just sort of like this panel really. Uh, that in my ones that I show. 
Uh, this was based on looking for parking in San Francisco, so somewhat, uh, again, somewhat the autobiographical nature of it. And uh, yes, yes, Pupil, uh, Pupil ends up having to sort of work for a corporate boss, McLurgies. You know, he's trying to run his own little, uh, his own little magic shop, but, you know, he ends up sort of having to work for, you know, a part of this big franchise, uh, you know, so by commenting on, uh, you know, the corporate world and all this sort of stuff. Uh, but yeah, all my, you know, I, I, I've had various jobs here, there and everywhere, all kinds, but, you know, I've always been a cartoonist and drawing away. And at, at some point, uh, you know, probably, well, like somewhere around the mid 2000s, really, I, I was working for an ad agency and I'd sort of become an art director in an ad agency and I'd been sort of doing pupil in the evenings and whatnot. And I was thinking, oh, you know, I'm actually sort of getting pretty good at this. I really ought to be sort of pursuing my career as an illustrator. Um, uh, but I didn't really want to quit that job. You know, I had a kid and uh, bills to pay in San Francisco. But uh, we were, I was working on Yahoo was our biggest account. And um, well, we all of a sudden we lost that account. And uh, all, uh, one day, you know, I, you know, I spent about four years there thinking every time the phone rang, I thought oh, we're all going to get laid off. But I sort of reached the point where oh my God, I'm going to be stuck in this place forever. And then the phone rang, <laughs> we were all laid off. Um, so, you know, I was like, I was a bit like, okay, Yahoo, I'm going to go out. And I sort of started sending my work out here, there and everywhere to get whatever work I could get. And um, so uh, let's see. So yes, here's a few more, a few more Pupil comics here. And uh, oh yeah, that, Pupil's mother-in-law there uh, comes to visit. That, so that was, that was one of the more recent ones of Pupil that I drew. So I was still drawing them sort of up to 2015. Uh, I guess that one signed and I've got like another one that I plan to do uh, I've written like I never really did a proper meeting story of how Pupil and Tina met uh, but I always thought oh, one day I'm going to do that and then sort of over the pandemic I was noodling with it I've had a few ideas so over the pandemic I more or less got the whole story all sorted out it was a bit like you know other people were doing jigsaws <laughs> and I was sort of like working on this big storyline that I've had all the bits and pieces for and I thought oh you know I was sort of viewing it a bit like a big jigsaw and I you know I sort of got the outline done and various chunks and now I've got most of the thing all done so it's at the point really it's more better written than anything with pupil that I ever had it written before uh oh and the other thing about pupil is that I, I worked a little bit at some point when I was quite busy with my day job I started working with a guy in Toronto called Adam Prosser who I met you know through web comics I sort of was familiar of him with him but I put an ad online you know saying that I was sort of looking for a writer on some comics message board and he responded it to it and I was already sort of vaguely aware I was quite aware of his work actually I'd seen it and thought it was funny so it was quite serendipitous and um you know so then he worked sort of my co-writer where you know I would sort of still be doing the stories but he sort of became a bit more of, sort of like a gag man uh working out the gags and stuff like that so you know that that was an interesting experience but uh, yeah that was uh you know, I don't know, whenever I sort of put ads online, you know, if you want something, you can put an ad online and you'll get it. <laughs> this has been my experience, you know, but yeah. So anyway, yeah, this was a little later on where Tina's mother-in-law comes to visit. And uh, so my, my idea with her was like a bit like Popeye character, really, you know, uh, but she was like a female. <laughs> Uh, sort of very much reminding me of uh, Al Cap's uh, Granny Yoakum there. Uh, yes, yes, she's a quite a <laughs> Granny Yoakum type. Yes, I love uh, little Abner there. And, uh, you know, didn't see a lot of that in England, but what I did see, I really liked it. Yes, and um, I've read some of it since. And um, yes, so she's a bit like that. She's the older sort of female <laughs> uh, and obviously a terrible mother-in-law for pupil. I don't know. Um, all right. I try... I, I'm trying to write sort of fairly, like, I thought I was writing post-feminist, but obviously I wasn't, you know, I, I don't know. Like, uh, Donna's not here, she can call me to task. I don't know, I, I never got into too much trouble and I've had a lot of female readers who enjoy it. So, um, you know, I, I can't, I, I, you know, I just do what I do and it was quite fun. It was, it was all for my own amusement. Uh, and I think, I think if you read it, it's justifiable, but I, I have had sort of, uh, I have been accused of crossing the line, but I, I don't think I do. Uh, <laughs> uh, I try and make fun of everybody. Um, so yes, so, so one of the jobs that I got after I started working full time as an illustrator was with this company Minion Games, who uh, he, he'd seen my pupil and um, he wanted to use it. He'd created this game, Those Pesky Humans, and he wanted to use some of my pupil art on that. And I sent this guy, James, uh, James Mave, or James Matthew, actually, I pretty pronounce it. And um, he, he asked me uh, to do that. And I, and I sort of talked him into letting me illustrate the game. And 
publishing this game, Legitimacy, which was, again, something that I'd sort of worked on in my spare time as a game. Quite a crazy sort of game, I, I, more as an illustration exercise than anything. I did it, but I think it was quite a good game. I sort of designed it with my son when he was about seven, and I tried to make a game that had, you know, no competitive advantage for, um, you know, if kids were playing against adults. Like, adults wouldn't really be able to beat kids. In fact, kids are sort of somewhat better at it than adults. And... Um, you know, so he put that out with Minion Games and yeah, he was a good businessman. He was, uh, um, you know, a bit like Joey Manley, who founded Modern Tales. He passed away quite young. Um, you know, there are two people you know, who were sort of quite influential in my life who, you know, really sort of gave me the opportunity, like Joey with Modern Tales and Pupil and then um, James with Minion Games. And he he'd, uh, he owned a couple of retail stores out in the Midwest in Wisconsin called Gain Universe. And he would also started um, like the websites like Drive Through RPG and Drive Through Comics uh, and uh, RPG Now. Uh, so, you know, he had quite a sort of successful business going with all that. And then he wanted to actually go into game publishing. Uh, so, you know, so he asked me to do Pesky Humans he wanted to publish. So I talked to him into letting me illustrate that. And then I talked him into... Uh, publishing uh, legitimacy. Uh, so yeah, so here are some boards from legitimacy. Um, you know, so it had these sort of hexagonal boards and there are all these character tiles, like this one showing all the characters. These were all sort of cards in the game. So I've got every all the, all the different cards and characters in the game all appear in that one image uh, and these boards. And the, the reason I'm sort of choosing to show these ones is they sort of reflect more on some of my later work that's coming up. Uh, I, how long are you expecting me to speak, by the way? Uh, generally, we go has whatever makes you comfortable. Generally, we it's forty five minutes, give or take. Uh, okay, okay, I can probably go on for a while. So yeah, <laughs> uh, I'll sort of whiz through a bit. All right. So yes, here, here are some of um, so some of some of these board tiles I did. I really you know enjoyed doing these and maps and things. So that's sort of become something that I've done quite a lot over the years. Yeah, I mean, consider I was noticing that with the first one, considering you said you were from around Glastonbury, it was. Yes, yes. You know, so I have, I have a lot of fun with some of that. And uh, yeah, you'll see some San, more San Francisco scenes and things in a bit. Um, but yes, you know, this, this one particularly is a little like the area where I grew up a lot, actually. <laughs> um, yes, and here's sort of those pesky humans. So that was great. So this was like sort of, you know, sort of fairly simple D&D &D in a box game. And again, my son was about sort of seven, eight, nine, ten at the ages when I was doing that. I guess, yeah, he was probably about seven when I was sort of starting to work on some of these things. And you know, so I had a lot of fun, you know, working out a game that would be fun to play with him, you know, and, you know, designing these characters that were largely based the sort of, sort of thing that I'd been doing in Pupil. Um, but yeah, and then, you know, designing all the boards and the different pieces, the tiles were there. I really had a lot of fun with doing all that stuff. And, he, you know, again, Pesky Humans had all these different cards. And uh, the Grave Business was another game I did um, that, that had a more of a zombie theme. So somebody else had designed that one. Um, yeah, so I, I sort of worked with them for a few years uh, working on different games. And yeah, he, he was a great man, James. And, uh, you know, he paid, uh, you know, he paid me with a good royalty on what I did, you know, which is something I always try and get a royalty. I'm, you know, trying to hold on to my ownership and intellectual property of things. And that's partly why I don't ever work to want, ever want to work for, like, you know, companies. Although, you know, some of what I do, so I, I have an agent uh, as well that I do like sort of children's books. So I do still do like a lot of uh, like language teaching books and things like that, that I used to do, you know, in my first job. I mean, I, I still do some of that stuff um, through through my agent and children's book stuff. Uh, so yeah, so Trolling the Dice is a book of cartoons that I put out more recently, but uh, they're cartoons I've done for this other company, Goodman Games, which is another company I've done a lot of work for. Uh, they do the Dungeon Crawl Classics line. And, you know, I've done sort of covers and more sort of D&D style sort of illustrations for them as well, uh, and maps and things. I think I've got a few maps here. Um, but the, I, did, I sort of got into doing cartoons for them, so I quite enjoyed that. Um, here's, uh, the, so this was from a book, um, how to write adventure modules that don't suck. So here's my sort of William Shakespeare as a dungeon master, um, thinking up his great ideas. Uh, yeah, so that's quite a good book if you play D&D or something like that, you know, teaching you all about how to write all these modules. So yeah, I don't know, is anybody here a gamer? Does anyone play D&D? No, nobody much? 
Yeah. I hang, I hang, used to hang out at a game store and I definitely reckon, recognize the barely human box from there. Oh, okay, great. Yes, all right. Yes, well, I, my, I, yeah. yeah. So, my uh, son plays D&D &D, and so I'm definitely going to have him watch this video. Oh, okay, great. Yes, yes. Well, I, I grew up playing that, you know, when it, from when it came out, probably, you know, like when I was about 10 or something. And you know, I played it sort of off and on. It's funny, I didn't play it so much in high school, but then I played it more like after in college for a bit and then not for a long time when I, after I came here, but then after a little while, I sort of, like, after I sort of started getting into all, illustrating all the games and things. I mean, I always liked that. Uh, and then, you know, so then I got into playing it more. And now I, now I have a regular group that we play, you know, on Sundays every other week, you know, and that was a good thing that we were able to do online over the pandemic. Um, yeah, so Goodman... Goodman, like he's he likes old school D and D, like first edition. The game sort of evolved quite a lot over the years. Um, and again, yeah, he he takes first rights on these cartoons, and then I can republish them in a book, which is nice. You know, Kickstarter. So yes, so with Minion Games as well, like he was he really pioneered the whole art of kickstarting board games. Like the first batch we did was sort of pre Kickstarter. Uh, but then we did more and more on Kickstarter and, you know, James Matthew was a very sort of energetic guy who, you know, wrote blogs about how to kickstart board games. So he really sort of started that whole trend of doing things on Kickstarter. I've, I've dabbled a bit on Kickstarter, but um, I did some of my pupil books on there. But, you know, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's not something I, I don't know. I, I tend to be drawing a lot and doing one thing and then another thing. And then I never really spend enough time promoting anything. Uh, once it's done, I sort of like sort of finish my project, make a book or whatever, and then I get on with the next thing. Anyway, so yes, so these were some of the ones that were popular from that book. Again, getting a little bit political sometimes. <laughs> uh, yes. All right. Uh, yes, the dungeon master is the puppet master, controlling the puppet, controlling the puppets. And yeah, these are some of the maps I've done. So these are this is slightly more recent. Uh, for Dungeon Crawl Classic, it's got the license to the Dying Earth, like Jack Vance's Dying Earth. Uh, so uh, that 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 will be coming out fairly soon. But yeah, so I got to do a whole lot of illustrations for the sort of Dying Earth rule book, which was great. That was very. Uh, I, I I'm not showing a lot of those. I, these are some of the maps that I did. But um, yeah, I had real fun going through like. You know, listening to Dying Earth. I listen to a lot of audio books while I work. So, you know, I had Dying Earth, but I listened to a lot of that and just got very inspired. That was the first time I sort of illustrated a proper book in a way, you know, even though it's for, for games. But yeah. Uh, all right. So then this is some of the work that I do through my agent. So slightly. So meanwhile, while I'm sort of doing games and things, you know, I'm sort of getting getting better pay, best get better paying work, I guess, through through my agent for doing illustrations. But you know, this is one where. Uh, I don't know, I did this joke book and I was doing a more, more cartoony style. I was sort of, at one point I sort of really sort of, sort of broke my style down and really sort of thought about it. Like I really sort of simplified the way I was doing things and then sort of built it back out again. A bit like sort of felt it was a bit like stripping down the engine and rebuilding my work. But I didn't, I don't get any royalty on this book. And I, I, so I was like, no, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And I kept saying no, and they kept offering me more money. So eventually I agreed because they did offer me quite decent money. But <laughs> but then they sort of split up. Now they've got all these little joke books and I keep seeing them selling everywhere. And I'm like, uh, I'm not getting it. I'm not getting a cut of that. Yeah. Uh, and this is also a similar sort of thing. My map of the USA. So I had quite a lot of fun with this one. Um, thinking about all the different states, you know, it's, it's good. I like, you know, I like doing things that have some sort of educational value. So it had all the states and all the state capitals. And then I tried to think of, you know, different things to represent all the states, different animals, different icons of the US, just trying to sort of get a balance of different things. And, uh, you know, well, I'm sure you could do a more cynical map. You know, I tried to do something that's nice and positive for the kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I try, I try to focus on the positive, but, you know, um, not that I don't, you know, I, yeah, I will, you know, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I find political cartooning. You know, I, I like really vicious, angry ones. There's a guy, Steve Bell, who works for The Guardian, who I absolutely worship as a political cartoonist. He, he's mm. really, you know, he's so vicious. And I'd want to do something like that. And I've dabbled in it from time to time, but I like, can't really maintain the bile or the anger that I need. Uh, current times, I've, I've been done a few Trumpy things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I don't know. In a way, I feel it's just encouraging them. So... <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, so I did a lot of work for Dover here. Uh, so that was, they were a good client for a long time. Uh, I did this whole series of what to doodle books for them. Uh, um, and uh, this one, which I was very pleased with, I've got some of these I'll show you from Dinosaur Rampage, which was, uh, yeah, so it's a sort of time travel adventure. I had these sort of different characters go through. It's funny, and it's on Amazon, and it's only ever got one review that's not very good on Amazon. And I've been a bit like, oh, and, you know, I'm very disappointed that nobody's very interested in this book. Uh, but then a friend of mine told me he just recently saw it in the Paleontology Museum in Texas. So I was like, oh, all right, well, then at least, <laughs> at least the people who might be might care about it see it. So that's good. So, yeah, that's dinosaurs. Um, again, when my son was fairly young, I think. And um, you know, he was very into dinosaurs and I love dinosaurs growing up too. So. So, and again, I had fun making mazes and different ideas. Uh, and then I did another one for them, Treasure Hunters. So, and I, you know, I got to think up all these puzzles as well. I had a very free hand in how I did these. You know, I had this sort of in, kind of Indiana Jones character. Um, what did I call him? Bing Carter and uh, Annabelle Smith, uh, who was... Uh, you know, kind of like Lara Croft, I guess, and uh, had some of their, you know, different adventures. A lot of fun with that. And then uh, this is Dr. Dig, who is a character I did for Cricket Magazine Group. I did their comics um, for their archaeology magazine. Oh. Uh, which I, I worked on very hard and had a lot of fun with for something that probably not a lot of people saw, but all right. <laughs> How did it go um, with them? I've heard some real horror stories about illustrators working for Cricket. Yes, yes, they were absolutely terrible. Um, you know, uh, they were, yeah, I, yeah, they were. They were over a year behind in paying me. Uh, you know, yeah, I wouldn't recommend anyone work for them. At first, they weren't so bad at first. I was first working for them and they were pretty good. And then I had, I was doing like, a, you know, I was doing the comic regularly. And the other thing I did regularly were these sort of uh, illustrations for the back cover of another of their magazine, Faces, which was a sort of... Uh, uh, like geography magazine and I think I was a little higher up the list of getting paid because I was doing it regularly for them uh, but I got very angry with them I you know I threatened to leave you know I threatened you know all sorts of things and then they would pay and then they did they did eventually I did get paid for everything I did but I also the thing is normally they ask for all the rights on it um, but because they weren't paying, I made them let me keep the secondary rights on it. And I think because they were so far behind that they agreed to that. Uh, then they, they got bought out eventually by this other company called ePals and they, they got all caught up on payments for a bit. Uh, and then I kept going on for them. Uh, but then eventually they started falling behind again. I'm like, no, I'm <laughs> okay, I'm done, done with this now. But I, you know, I sort of stuck with them for some years. But yes, I, yeah, they were, they were. They got pretty terrible about that. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, the main reason I sat with them is they let me. So, so I put these out in, so I've got like these, so I put them together, a book of world travel puzzle mazes, good times puzzles and mazes. Uh, and I want to put out a book of the Dr. Dig ones as well. I have, just haven't really got around to that yet. But, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't know that that's going to have a huge sort of out, outside appeal, but whatever. I mean, you know, being able to get the rights back made me sort of tolerate their, you know, egregious behavior about payment. But you know, in, in the, on their side, at least they did always pay. It did. It did eventually turn up, and you know, I've <laughs> so yeah. But you know, I mean, I think the thing is that they always had new people. They they were like a sort of a market for new illustrators, you know. So you know, they would do it, and they would send me. They'd send me a decent amount. I wouldn't do too much, but I do like those, and I do the odd sort of spot illustration or odd article for them here and there. So it was a good little sort of supplement to other things. And it meant that, you know, oh, I had all this money that was owed to me, <laughs> which, which was nice, you know, okay, well, it's sort of like a bit like having money in the bank or something. Okay, and I started doing some of these sort of more search and find these scenes, which then led me to sort of getting work doing that through my agent. So then I did this book, Where's the Penguin, through my agent, which was like a search and find, like, you know, like, where's Waldo or whatever. Um, and they, they'd done a couple of others. They'd had like a Where's the Meerkat, which was very popular. They were based in England. Now, meerkats were very popular in England at one point and then penguins. So they asked me to do this. And this, this book's done very well. And it's been reprinted all over the world. And um, 
you know, and I did a couple of others for them as well. So, yeah, so that's kind of what I've done the most of, uh, you know, that I have on Amazon that people will have seen, or, you know, that have got review, you know, that have sold a decent number of copies and got a decent number of reviews or whatever. So, yeah, so like these sort of big search and find scenes, I didn't have a lot of time to work on them. You know, uh, I'm lucky I didn't really ever get quite two weeks on one of them. You know, normally I think it worked out I had about a week and a half on one of them. But this was like the first one that I did. And I did it in about a week to see if I could. But it was always very hard work, mm. very hard work doing these. Uh, you know, and so I didn't, you can see there's a sort of kind of more empty space on some of them. Well, like, okay, I knew there was going to be a text box on top of that, so I didn't bother filling it in. But I keep thinking, oh, I should go back and fill it in so I can sell them more as opposed to some of them. It work, they work a bit better. But again, had a lot of fun, you know, just sort of searching, you know, so you can see like a lot of the elements of the different things I'd worked on before kind of came into play here and just, you know, thinking up these detailed scenes. And, you know, I traveled a bit when I was younger in North Africa and Egypt. So, I, you know, Egypt and Morocco and places. So I got some of that in there. Haunted House, I was quite pleased with how that one came out. Um, bowling Alley, you know, uh, <laughs> stand and look at these for a long time. But I guess because we're time's moving on, I'll, I'll sort of whiz through them a bit quicker. Yeah. Um, at the museum. Again, I had so much fun with that, just looking up all these crazy art objects, <laughs> putting as much as I could in the museum. Um, and they're sort of done in quite a spontaneous way. So I'll do them about life size, drawing them, you know, plan maybe in layers, maybe planning out the background and then on, on and then doing the sort of characters on a piece of tracing paper above, but only very roughly. I'll sort of do the, I'll sort of collect a lot of reference. And then sort of blot in the characters. Uh, I'll go back to this one a bit. Um, and then, you know, really do all the detail in the pen. And then the colouring sort of takes a while. I sort of, you know, I would deliberately draw them so that they had no, you know, so there weren't many gaps in the, you know, in the, in the artwork, in the, the lines that all connect. And then I sort of have a script to randomly fill it with colours, which actually sort of saves a lot of time, especially with all the clothes and things. And then I would do other sort of little shortcuts that I figured out, like, you know, I'd, I'd do a first wave where I did all the faces, one color, and all the hair, like one color. So then I could select it all and then go in afterwards and sort of color it, you know, with the brush. And so I, I figured out all sorts of little techniques to whiz through this. So this was the last one in Where's the Penguin, where I thought, well, you had 10 penguins that you're looking for. So now you've got to find the 10 correct penguins out of all the other penguins. So, you know, I want people, I wanted people to stay busy with this book, you know, and they do. And kids, you know, I know from like reading reviews and stuff, people, you know, the kids come back to these books and want to look at them over and over. Because there's so much to spot. Curious, as far as the approach to this, would you be doing the items that you had defined first and then work around them or is just... Uh... Well, so no, yes, no, I tend to do the scenes first and then put the items in afterwards. So for so this one, for example, so... There was 10 penguins that you had to find. So usually every one of them, they have the sort of same format in that they're 10 characters to find. So usually right. I'll add those 10 in after. Then this one, you know, then I, so then I went back through the book and I found like different objects from all the different scenes that I put in here. So all these little objects they got are all little presents that the penguins brought back. So you can go back and find all these objects in the previous scenes. Oh, if you want to clever. Find. You know, that could keep you busy forever. Uh, so yes, and then they had me do one called like fairy tale search which has now been done as Where's the Bunny? And it's funny, it's Fairy Tale Search, it didn't do as well, but you know, it was like, it wasn't it like that was in a hardback and it was like the least good selling one, but then they redid it as Where's the Bunny and now it's doing very well. And yeah, Where's the Bunny has been sort of number one on Amazon in the UK. And they're out here, they only have the really hardback ones, but you can get the UK soft covers here too. Hans and Gretel. So yeah, I went back again to the original fairy tales here and, you know, read the source material, um, you know, Brothers Grimm or um, Hans Christian Andersen or whatever they were. Um, oh yeah, I like this one. Uh, this was uh, Sleeping Beauty, uh, sorry, Princess and the Pea, Princess and the Pea. I did Sleeping Beauty, but I don't like that one because there's lots of sleeping people and they all look like they it was very hard to make them not look like they were dead. The Princess and the Pea I liked better. I had a lot of fun with this, although I noticed that like, so these books have been published in Poland and I noticed in Poland, they made her white, which 
<laughs> it's like, oh, you know, I, I don't have a lot of control. I do get like a little bit of a royalty on them, but I don't have a lot of control over what they do with them. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah, there's not there's nothing much I can do about that. I was a bit annoyed with it. But I, also, they were published in Ukraine, you know, and I'd seen and I got they got some really nice little reviews in Ukraine, and I was like, oh, you know, that was so sweet. And it really, when the, you know, think about what's going on over there and those families. Yeah. So anyway. You know, yeah. So, you know, they're very simple to appeal to like a broad range of age of kids. And I can tell, you know, I can see from the reviews that they do. And so where's the elf? So again, this one was originally where's Santa and now they called it where's the elf. Uh, and that one does very well at Christmas, obviously. Here's New York, uh, Rockefeller Plaza, all the ice skating, has lots of fun with that one. Putting in different characters. You know, I'm always sort of done a fine line over sort of copyright. You know, you can sort of see Seinfeld characters and Sex in the City characters in there, maybe. But, you know, they're Audrey Hepburn. But, you know, I, you know, um, yeah, well, it's, it's always very interesting, like where where the line is on those sort of things. Yeah, <laughs> I just spotted, I just spotted Audrey. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, this skiing one, this one's good. I, I, and I can say so some of the so. I don't know if I'm really allowed to or not, but I have them up on Redbubble where I can sell them as sort of jigsaw puzzles and things. I think I'm allowed to. I don't know. Like the copyright agreement I have with them is very sort of flimsy looking and it doesn't say anything about exclusivity, exclusive copyright. So, but I had to fight tooth and nail with them to get a royalty. And like everybody, it's so difficult to get anybody to give you like a royalty on anything nowadays. Again, like the penguin. So where where Santa? Like there's a Santa, there's a real Santa, and then here they are with all the fake Santas at the Santa convention. So you have to spot the real Santa in amongst all the others. <laughs> Keep you busy. Uh, right, and then Wizard Pickles is one that I made myself uh, in my own time. So this one has got a bit more of a story to it. So this one is really quite ambitious. Uh, and I haven't really got it out there as much as I should have yet. Um, but uh, you know, so it's got elements of the search and find, but elements of puzzles and elements of a game. You know, so there's, there's a story in there and there are lots of sort of different codes and things like that and different activities. So each page has got several different kind of puzzles going on. Uh, and it's also got like a strong narrative story of the characters that go through Maisie Pickles and her aunt Wilma, uh, who's a wizard at the castle uh, and uh, some magical pickles have got out. They live on Pickle Farm. Uh, yeah, there are pickles, you have to count the pickles on every, all sorts of different things you have to do. Then there's mazes uh, that you have to solve. Um, and it's all very solvable. I've had it open. So I, I put it, I did it on Kickstarter. Some people on uh, Kickstarter backed it. Uh, you know, I know it's been done and solved uh, and it's soluble, but you know, I like to get into quite complicated mazes here. You know, these are just the things that I would have liked when I was a kid. You know, here it's a sort of dungeon maze. You go down, I'm very pleased with this one, really. You've got to go down, you go down, the, you can go down the tubes and the, like you get, so Maisie gets turned into slime and she has to go down the tubes and then down the grates, but she can't go back up through the tubes. So she can only sort of go on this downward path uh, and it sort of loops around. So you've got to try and find the shortest path. And uh, so whenever the big puzzle on the page that you solve it, you get a letter and a symbol. Um, and again, here going through, through the town, <laughs> the dragon. So I could mix it up a bit more on this one. You know, I, I, you know, sometimes with the search and finds they're a bit samey. So this one I could do all kind of different things and really just sort of uh, do all what I wanted to do. And then, yeah, so you get to the end here and then there's a, if you've solved all the puzzles right, you have the right letters that you can put in and you can solve this final sort of code here and get the magic word uh, and solve the puzzle. And, uh, Help save the queen, who's been uh, caught by the giant pickle who stole Wizard Wilma's wand. Uh, and wh where's the mermaid? Another one I did. This one was for Penguin Random House, a different publisher. Um, but uh, I was quite pleased with this one. Again, I, I wrote, I got to write the story on this. Some of the, the penguins and the elves one, they, I didn't actually write, get to write the story. This one, I got to write the story. I had even less time. I only had one week per spread on this one. <laughs> Ridiculous. But I worked on it really hard and did like got a very minimal but quite a strong story I think about like diversity and in the, in the environment uh, and all that. This is one of my favorites, Mer School, 
uh, I drew the whole of this, not, not coloured it, but like drew it all in one day. Just like super quick. <laughs> but I was like, oh, it actually came out pretty good. Yes, so here's Mer School where they're learning all the important subjects. They're doing a bit of science, some hairdressing, singing and dancing and gardening. Um, and art, of course, uh, art and sculpture and some sports. Yes, you know, so that, you know, Mer, Mer School's got, got its priorities right. Uh, this is where the mermaid, so this was one, I kind of drew this one later in the book. It comes earlier on, but I drew it later because I knew I was just going to have a lot of fun doing it. Uh, I've got it up on the wall. I don't know if you can see it. I've got it up on the wall beside me there. Um, because, uh, I don't know, I was very happy with it. It's very nice. It's very loose and free. I didn't think too hard. I was very happy with the monkeys. I keep thinking I want to do something else with those monkeys. Uh, yes, yeah, so Paradise Island, you know, the peaceable kingdom. Uh, the mermaids are all lying down together and there's the diver so the diver's the prince actually it turns out you're not really sure it's not clear until the end and even then it's sort of a mystery that you kind of have to solve reading it like who the diver is but the diver's the prince and here, here he's finding the mermaid and falling in love with her um uh, oh the arctic so this is one they wanted to have in you know uh uh so yeah again i put all the arctic animals in you know using reference what kind of animals do you find in the arctic there they all are there are the people up in the arctic uh, the publisher said, like, put, told me to put David Attenborough in there. So I don't know if that means that David Attenborough saw and approved this book, but I'm going to assume that he, it, he did because, I, I, well, it's Penguin Random has, so they probably published his books. I don't know. But anyway, there he is, uh, along with everybody else in the Arctic. You know, so the Arctic's getting a bit crowded as well nowadays. Um, and then, like, the, the story of the Little Mermaid, the prince is having his birthday on a boat. The little, the original Little Mermaid's a little like she's a little. Uh, she doesn't have a lot of agency in that story. She's a little pathetic. So my story, she has a little more agency. Uh, but anyway, I guess that's all I've got from those. But yeah. So uh, yeah. Anyway, so she, ends, she finds out the Prince's shampoo factory has been polluting the environment. But it wasn't really his fault. It was his uncle, who's on the boat here somewhere, who'd been doing it. But uh, anyway, they they sorted it all out. He re, he greens his products, and uh, they all live happily ever after. Uh, and then that led me to doing some more recently for the Daily Mail newspaper in the UK, who, uh, uh, I don't know if you know the Daily Mail, probably, if you only see the Daily Mail online, that's pretty terrible, I don't know, they're a bit, yeah, they're very, they're sort of, what I call that mom conservative, they're very sort of safe, people sort of get it for the TV there, I don't know, they're not super political, but, you know, the Daily Mail online is pretty terrible, but, uh, anyway, they can't be all bad, because they like my work, and so they use my work for their treasure hunts. So I did that. So I did a few of these for the, their treasure hunts uh, over during the pandemic. Actually, this one, this one in Trafalgar Square was right in the middle. It was in the middle of 2020. I'm like, oh, you want me to do a crowd scene during the middle of the pandemic? Am um, I supposed to be putting masks on people? No. Well, that's probably just as well. <laughs> so I decided that it was all taking place during some alternate reality of the pandemic. Um, and OK, so anyway, again, they let me I can like one thing I'll say good for the Daily Mail, they let me keep all the rights to it. So I could, uh, you know, they paid me pretty well to put it in and they let me keep them. And so I spent the last uh, part of last year putting them together into Where's Itsy Bitsy Spider along with a few other search scenes. So now I've got this as my own sort of search book that I can put out there, print on demand and have it next to, you know, the other ones that are out there by the other publishers. And, um, ooh, well, oh, okay, there's a little video here. Do you want to see a video? Yeah, so that was a uh, nice, so I don't know if you could hear the song okay, but uh, my friend uh, Chris wrote that, so I was quite pleased with that. 
<laughs> so yeah, so this was sort of fairly typical of those search books. You know, here are all the characters that you have to find, and then all of them are in every scene. So yeah, so I was able to redo, and I, I sort of redid them a bit from how I did them in the Daily Mail. And the Daily Mail, they really didn't, you know, they looked, they didn't criticize me at all, really, on what I did. There were just a few little things that they were like called out, but um, yeah, they let me pretty much do what I wanted. So, but yeah, I sort of cleaned it all out and made it sort of fit in the format. It was all quite a lot of work, but uh, got it all together. Oh, this one's from San Francisco. Here we go. So this one I actually was I'd done for. Um, for something else here, like a, the comic book guide to the mission, I had done that some years ago. That was one of the, like one of the first search scenes I did actually. So I was able to put that in there, and yeah, this one also. So yeah, so that was more recent, and then, all right, the, then these are some cartoons that I've done, like Earth Space. So these are very simple cartoons. Like in contrast to doing all those complicated search scenes, these are like really really simple, like sort of science fictiony cartoons that I've done, I don't know how many of them. So I just sort of started off just doing a few little space facts. Um, I don't know, I, did, I was doing them for a while again. This was uh, probably uh, 2018, 2019, I was doing these. So yeah, and I have them, I put them together in a book. Okay, so okay, I to say disability, that's one thing I haven't talked about. You can't really tell because I'm sitting here. I'm a, I have to say I'm disabled from spina bifida, like a little bit, like not like spina bifida is quite a spectrum thing, you know, and you can be quite badly disabled from it, where your whole spine, spinal cord is sort of out of your body and when you're born. And you know, now they do sort of surgery on the womb. I, I have what's called spina bifida occulta, where it didn't affect me a lot when I was very young, but it sort of affect me more over the years. So I have some mobility issues. But I, I'm not, I don't need a wheelchair or anything. Well, I'm sort of getting to that point maybe where I will. And then when I was about 20, I went to a hospital in London. They told me I'd be in a wheelchair when I was 40. So I'm 52 now and I'm not yet, but you know, I'm getting that way. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's sort of what's probably given me more time to sit around drawing cartoons. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Yeah, that sort of kept me quite focused on what I wanted to do in my career. And I don't know. I don't, I don't, it's not something I often address very head on in my work, but I always try to promote diversity and inclusion in it. Oh, what's the thing? What's that? oh there we go. <laughs> you know, so some of these ideas, these were just little sort of sci-fi, trying to do a little sort of science fiction story in a simple, simple, quick way, try and get as much as possible in there, just or just like a little random thought, really. <laughs> I don't know what that one's about, I like it. <laughs> uh okay i don't know about that one that one i saw some flies on, in my back garden on my back here and uh they were all shiny in the sun and i thought well i guess they probably look pretty sexy to other flies <laughs> uh all right getting uh you know so some of these was getting a little more political maybe <laughs> uh yes we blow up our planet they're very pleased with themselves apparently this is almost a whole separate presentation, really. Um, Tower of Babel, yeah, they're all typical, you know, they're pushing to get it finished. Yeah, but uh, so apparently it's a, quite a technological marvel. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so these have a little more commentary <laughs> to you know, yeah, they, they're mostly in contrast to the search scenes where, you know, the search scenes, you know, the, the one thing they have in similarity is that they're quite, you know, off the cuff. Um, you know, and trying to be a little more like a gag cartoon, I suppose, but still not really like, I don't know, like normal gag cartoons. I love my dad and he does great cartoons and I, it's like I don't really want to compete with him in a way. <laughs> um. Yeah, so I'm quite pleased with all these. Yeah. There we go, politicians again. Corporations. Uh, this one I like, I keep thinking of reasons to share this one. You know, the 98% probability, it's probably true, we probably will be happier governed by algorithm, but is that 2%? It's still very worrying, really. <laughs> uh, that one's uh, that's me and my wife at the end of the day. 
and uh, yeah, well, this was all pre-pandemic, so goodness knows, yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go, political, I suppose. Don't ask me what it means. It's probably lying. It's probably lying. Whatever it is. Uh, yeah, well, my son, you know, yeah, they're very attached to their devices, aren't they? But, you know, that's probably where we're going. That was just a piece on the radio where they were talking about some people living in their van who needed to find more sustainable housing. So, I don't know. Here we go. There's the policeman coming along to tell them they shouldn't be there. The guns. So, yeah, these are a little less jolly. I mean, they make me happy, but... <laughs> Sorry, they're a little less jolly than the search books. Uh, and I've sort of got my, so I have them together in a book, but I was sort of putting them out little mini comics that I can have at conventions and things. And then some of these, so it's these covers. So yeah, okay, I'm gonna whiz through some of these. So yeah, so then like after that, I've been, so this is a lot of stuff I was doing during the pandemic where I thought, oh, I'm just gonna do what the hell I want. And I was just doing some uh, more watercolor kind of designs. Again, just, uh, just designs I can have a put on my red bubble store. Do you have the Mr. Man up there? Roger Hargreaves, he was great, somebody I grew up with. He had Mr. Topsy Turvy, this is Mr. Topsy Trump. <laughs> Everything with him is backwards. Uh, okay, the that, that C3PO, I just, <laughs> he's had enough of everybody. My wife likes these ones. So yeah, these are just sort of fun little designs. Mostly they just sort of start off as little doodles. And then I'm like, oh, I just have some fun. So I'm now sort of going back to sort of messing with watercolor, practicing with my dip pens. I'd been doing a lot of stuff digitally. So I just wanted to do some stuff. Uh, okay, I've got a few little some technique here. Especially that guy from Google Day 2. There's a lot of evidence that aliens exist. They glow in so the dark. And putting them on TikTok, I tried that, but it, was, it was all got a bit like hard work, really. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you can see me actually draw it here. Well, I don't know how we're doing for time. I, I mean, I could keep going, but we've been going a good hour, so yeah. <laughs> yes. Definitely. No, this is fantastic. So <laughs> let's see. Anybody have any questions? Yeah. Yeah, I've got a few more that I did there, like Lieutenant Uhura. I'll just whiz through some of these here. Yeah, so these are just some more. And then very recently, I've just been doing some of these just... Uh, you know, life drawing. I started doing some life drawing just before the pandemic. So it was again, something else I was doing. So, uh, well, some of these are quite good to look at. Oh, let me just show a couple of these. Uh, here we go. So this is with no underdrawing or anything, just going from a photograph. Oh, wow. Anybody who can do a uh, free hand with a Sharpie is, in, is okay in my book. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so I was just trying to go like fast and loose and just bang them out and see what happened. But they came out really good and I'm like, oh, these are pretty good. So like, I don't know, now I'm like, oh, should I be should I be just becoming a proper artist at this point? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there's a few of those. See? Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is another one that's got some video to it. Here we go. Yeah, so, well, I'm working from a photograph, so, you know, that's part of it. But yeah, just having a lot of fun, just, oh, can I just go straight in with a pen? Well, I guess, you know, I don't know, it's funny, I didn't do, I did some figure drawing, you know, early on, and took, took a, did a little bit of figure drawing earlier when I was sort of learning art, but then I haven't really done much for years and years, just, but, oh, but I guess I was drawing cartoons using reference, whatever so it was just kind of fun to 
just get in there and start doing it and coming and getting them getting good results and i was like oh okay i guess i can draw finally <laughs> i don't know what point i didn't know i don't know if i really thought i could draw for a long time mm -hmm. there we go all right there we go the end yeah so that yeah that's cool. where i got to lately <laughs> okay all right so anybody have any questions let's see if there was Ah, uh, let's go with some of the questions that were on the chat. Uh, Tim wanted to know what mediums do you prefer? Uh, uh, I'm preferring more analog lately, although I mm. found digital very convenient over the years. Um, as you, you probably can't see, but I've got like a big uh, Wacom Cintiq tablet down here. If I tilt it down, no, you can't, yeah, the angle won't quite work, but so uh, yeah, that's, you know that's been a big boom for me i've been coloring digitally for a long time um you know really since my web comic days um mm. i found coloring and then you know those earth space cartoons i was inking them digitally as well but i was still always drawing everything in pencil first starting things as, with a pencil um but then yeah then those more recent things you know i was sort of going back to doing some watercolor having fun with that and i, I want to do some more of that and yeah, then doing the sharpies and the markers. That was that was something I just sort of discovered. So yeah, I was sort of going to some life drawing, um, and uh, yeah, just started using those there and was just having some fun. So yeah, I I quite like doing that now. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I've been having that experience myself. And, and let's see. Even though this is probably a moot question since it happened came out about. Uh, 20 years after your webcomic, but uh, Steve wants to know if you ever saw, watched, watched Disenchanted at all. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, he stole my ideas there. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I watched it, I, yeah, I, I actually haven't watched it all through yet. I've still been, been meaning to watch it more, but yeah, uh, well, <laughs> it just, I'll say with my webcomic, I didn't really know what I was doing when I was doing it. I think, you know, I, I really do want to go back and sort of do, do the story of how they met that I've written now, because I feel like, oh, that's going to be really good. I actually sort of know what I'm doing a little better, uh, well, a lot better now. Uh, I sort of, by the time I finished doing Pupil, I felt like I knew what I was doing. But when I started, I certainly did not know what I was doing. But I mean, I just did it every day to have something to draw every day and figure out how, how it was doing. I, I like the puzzle aspect of it all really to be, you know, I'm sort of, uh, you know, I was really quite good at math and stuff at school, um, as well as drawing. Uh, and I like, yeah, I just love like the whole puzzle aspect and the sort of gaming aspect of it and the, in, the sort of interactivity in a way. Yeah. Okay. Anybody, let's see, anybody else, anybody other have questions? I don't have a question, but I certainly have a compliment. I am amazed by your work. It's oh, thank you. incredible. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, well, um, yes, well, I've, I've been at it for a while and uh, thanks, yeah, it's good to show. It's fun, it's been fun to have an excuse to sort of put it all together and talk about it, yeah. Cool. Is that Donna in her car there in the corner? Looks yeah. Looks like trying to say something. <laughs> Hi Donna, thank you so much for asking me to do this. Can't hear you. <laughs> no, I can't hear. Yeah, a lot of people are muted if they're. <laughs> All right, any more questions? Well, Chuck, this is Michael Jancy. I'm off video because the sun is streaming through the house, but I just loved, I, I got in here late, but I'd love to know about where Spider came from. Oh, itsy bitsy spider. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yes. So in my back garden. So I thought. Um, so I I done the pieces for the Daily Mail, and I and I you know I knew I had the rights to them, so I knew I could put them into a book, and I had a few others, so I was going to put to a book, and I was trying to think of a good theme, and you know I've, I've got a number of themes of like search from pine books, and I wasn't really sure, and then I looked and I was sort of sat in the back garden, and I saw a little spider crawling up the wall, and I suddenly thought, oh, itsy bitsy spider, and it brought back some of a memory, like. Um, you know, one of my first clients when I was, you know, about, you know, probably like, you know, quite young, you know, she, my friend's sister, mm -hmm. who, she was a bit older and she had, she would, she was a photographer and she lived in London and she would do various things and she would put things together, like periodical stuff, like, all different things. And she a few times had me illustrate things and 
she'd seen me at one point, like I think when probably I was only about 15 and I would drew, drew a little sort of spider, you know, just a little spider with like spider webs or something in the corner. I did it a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. She, she would say to me, oh, that's your thing. You're always doing spiders. And I'd be like, oh, no, 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 that's not really my thing. <laughs> spiders. Then I saw the spider and I thought, oh, wow, itsy bitsy spider. It brought that back to mind. And I thought, oh, yeah, well, now maybe it is my thing. So, yeah, maybe I'll do spider. And I just thought, oh, you did a little thing that's like hard to find. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's fun. I it's a, it's a fun piece, and I've I've sent it off to some young nephews. Um, it it you know I mean kids just love that stuff. Did yeah, well, thank how, you, Mike. Yes, you know, yeah, they, they, they're very good, and all ages can look at it, and it's very good for kids and parents to look at it together. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Kids can sort yeah, of no. choose how they look at it. Yeah. And and technically, then, since this is a you know a drawing group, how big are you working? So I usually do the first pass, I do it sort of actual, whatever the printed size will be, which is usually like tabloids. Uh, yeah. uh, and, you know, I might do the background. If it's got a more complicated background, like if it's a beach scene, I don't really need to bother like doing a background, but if there's sort of more perspective and stuff, I, I might sort of do that first. And I'll sort of figure out where the figures are going to be. And I might do them on a sort of tracing layer on top. Uh, but then I'll scan that. And I'll sort of maybe build it up a bit in the computer and I might go a bit back and forth, mm -hmm. you know, like working, the, working out the composition. And then I'll print it out as big as I can uh, for inking it. Yeah. So, um, you know, and I might do little vignettes or little scenes, you know, depending on how much time I have and how much I can work on it. I might work out little bits, you know, uh, sort of larger, but then I'll print it out to ink it at about, I think it's like 135%. Because that's, you know, so then that gets quite large and yeah. that's then I can get that in my scanner like in three passes. <laughs> but, it, you know, it's the largest I can print out on yeah. a big sheet. So I usually use a big sheet of vellum for inking, although sometimes I've inked them digitally as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God, that's so fun because it's I did. Um, I had friends years ago that, well, they still own the restaurants, but they had asked me to do some children's menus. And I did this one sort of like the spider thing where. You know, it's it's sort of that God's view of a of a pier with with fish and as people, you know, kind of a SpongeBobby thing in a way. But yeah. my God, how big I had to ink it! <laughs> yes, just, yes. Get I mean, away yeah, with it, the line falls apart if you don't. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, I think well, I sort of made the decision. I'm going to try and keep the line fairly consistent. Not so. Yeah, you got to go I mean, a little clear, but you got to get be very French about it. Yeah. Yes, yes, be, be very French, so that's a good way of putting it. And um, yeah, I like that pit artist pen is my favorite um, oh. pen for those. Yes, I yeah. like that. It's nice India ink and, you know, yeah, good good amount of control. Mostly well, with that, and with that vellum, there's no way to, I mean, it really kind of just holds to a very steady line, doesn't it? If you do yes. it vellum. And, and also if you're doing it digitally, because with digital, it, you can get that feeling. But, but yes. yeah, I, I've, I've been working on uh, watercolor paper sometimes. And you know, just sits there and bobs and winks and spits and titters, <laughs> and you're like, "This isn't Lynn Claire at all." <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Well, I've been having a lot of fun with some of the watercolors on those more recent ones. You know, yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Lynn Claire. Well, yeah, it's never as clear as I want it to be, but you know, I don't know. No, That's really, I, 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 when you're doing it, it's hard to so you know see. <laughs> well, you know, Hergé had 15 people inking for him, so it doesn't count. <laughs> yes, right. Yes, I do. I've got my Tintin Bible somewhere, like the, you know, the, um, what is it called? The Tintin, the Complete Companion. That was quite oh, good. I also, love he that. Was, like book. copying directly out of National Geographic as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's really fun. Thanks for sharing all that about Spider. I, I think it's been a really fun uh, piece to, to, to see. And then, like I said, I've, I've shared it with, I've got uh, five and eight year old nephews and they've just, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, they just absolutely just adore it. Yeah, that's the, the best age for those. Yes, definitely. Yeah, they love them. But yeah, you know, but, they're, you know, they're, they're also they're sort of adults like them, too. So, yeah, it's yeah, it's. Really oh, no, I mean, that's that's together. That's, yeah. that's the OCD in all of us as artists. We I can't stop looking at that shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, that's it, isn't it? I, you know, yeah, I just uh, yeah. And, I, you know, I just like to sort of think about it and, you know, try and give them all a, like some personality and really. I had uh, uh, well, my goddaughter. She, I mean, she's, uh, she's probably eighteen now, but uh, you know, when she was little, like she would look at a picture book and she would always say what everybody was saying. 
So I always sort of would think about that when I'm doing <laughs> what's it, what's everybody saying? <laughs> Okay, last call, anybody else? Yeah, I just, I didn't have a chance to, I, I saw a lot of the work, it was amazing. And I just finally got in the house here after the bus trip and tour of Clallam Bay. As you yeah, that's say. been fun, watching you on the move. <laughs> that was wild now, everybody knows. <laughs> I figured I might as well make a tour around. it. But uh, Dale Sipperly set up um, the connection with Chuck and uh, he said, you're gonna love this stuff. And he did not lie. That was wonderful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, well, yeah, Dale's, Dale's uh, well, he's a good friend these days. Yes, you know, I've got to know him quite well over the last few years. Yes, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's very kind of him. Yeah, but he, yeah, they, he did he did a great job making the suggestion, and you certainly gave a wonderful presentation. Yes. Well, thank you all. It's been really uh, so much fun. Yeah, it's great. I yeah, I loved it. <laughs> no, definitely. Uh, yeah, so, any, but anyway, no, thank you so much, Chuck. This was absolutely in, incredible and fascinating. And again, <laughs> really appreciate it. Uh, so anyway, everybody, thank you so much for coming. I, um, again, let me uh, remind you of coming up, uh, uh, I'll send, post the link again uh, for, if anybody has stuff for the best of the Northwest contest that I mentioned, I just reposted the Facebook link to it. And also for a much more uh, relaxed setting, I also will remind you that we have our monthly drink and draw <laughs> on thir next Thursday at 6.30, which I also just posted the link for. Everybody, uh, Chuck, if you're interested in having a more of a time to chill talk shop yeah. not uh the link is there i'll try and plug it as much as possible oh and it's worth coming to it's really wonderful chuck you really should show up it's, it's great all right sounds good so uh, on thursdays did you say yes thursdays at 6 30 uh, all right time so yeah well, that sounds good yeah they have one of the cartoon art museum on sundays but that's when i have my D, &D game so i can never never seem to be able to make it yeah, yeah. i keep meaning to go to the uh, cartoonist museum one but i keep missing missing whenever they have it yes i think that's usually that's usually the first tuesday or first sun sorry first sunday sorry second sunday second sunday of the month yeah okay yeah yeah so oh and if anybody gets a chance i put up the latest um a bazillion ghost stories podcast and wendy peeney of elf quest sent me her scary little childhood ghost story and i thought she was going to send me her own voice but she wanted me to read it and she told me to ham it up and make it as as creepy as possible <laughs> I really liked it so fun. you want to wendy peeney's very scary childhood ghost story the closet just go uh, look at the a bazillion ghost stories yeah, that it's sounds on Spotify. Great. She, she was posting about like, Cree Summer, like doing the doing a audio version of Elf Quest. Uh, yeah, I saw that. She was um, that was being posted. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, thank you again. That Thanks. was an incredible presentation, and we have something really wonderful uh, recorded now that um, Bill can put up on YouTube. It's going to be really impressive. Yeah, I'll no. definitely circle back and watch it. Thanks all.